Hello all and welcome to the Winco Fireworks YouTube channel. Today we are sharing a video about public relations tips and tricks for your fireworks business. Um, we know that fireworks season can come on super fast and there's a lot to do in a short period of time. And we know that those marketing and PR tasks can kind of get put to the bottom of your list. So hopefully this video will give you guys a game plan on how to approach your local media, how to talk to them in the interview, and then even how to amplify that coverage on social media. So that's kind of just like a quick high level um, overview of the video. We'll kind of get into introductions and things like that. Okay. Um, so today you're going to be with Alicia and Megan, me, Alicia and Megan. Um, and just a little bit about me. So I've been doing marketing and advertising for a little over 14 years. Um, done everything from social media, website work to email, instro marketing, um, all kinds of just really everything across all those traditional marketing and media channels. Um, Megan and I worked together at a past career and now we're working together at Winco and um, just wanted to kind of share these, you know, this information with you all. So Megan, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Megan Muir and Alicia and I met um, while we were working on a brand that I'm guessing everybody is very familiar with, McDonald's. Yes. And we reconnected here with Winco. But um, I think for what we're going to be talking about today, my experience a very long time ago when I first mm -hmm. graduated from college, um, I worked at, I majored in journalism and then I worked as a reporter. And so that experience and that knowledge is what is very, very helpful to um, a lot of what we're going to be talking about today, what makes a good story what is um, most useful and most helpful when working with the media, because I kind of have some of that insider information that I'm going to be sharing um, with all of you today. Awesome. Well, um, I'll review the agenda. So like we kind of already talked about, um, we're going to talk about why local media is important, how you can work with your local media folks, tips and tricks while you're doing those interview questions and answering some of those difficult questions that may get thrown at you. We also want to give you some possible story ideas that you can use. Um, we have a couple of resources for you guys to download. We'll, we'll have the links on, on the presentation, but we'll also post them in the comments when this video is posted. And then we'll talk a little bit about social media. So super quick, um, I'm going to really just turn it over to Megan and let her get started. Uh, walking us through PR. Okay, so a lot of um, what I want to start with is why we're even talking about this today, why media coverage is important. And I hope all of you have um, worked with the media before, or you have watched the news before, um, <laughs> picked up a newspaper in the past. So much has changed in this industry, which I'm sure you know about. Um, when I first started in public relations, almost everything that I did was around media coverage. And now things have changed so much. And so a lot of what I do is um, digital and social media, but, but media relations is still very important. I hear from clients all the time that when they get coverage in the news, when they get earned media coverage on, on TV and in newspaper, it makes a big difference for their business. So that's why we're doing this today. That's why we're doing this webinar. And we want to talk to you guys about it and give you some tips for how you can work through that. So the first thing I want to start with is branding and what's your story and talk a little bit about the difference between advertising and PR and just kind of um, set that foundation. So kind of when you think about branding, you think about advertising and you think about your logo and I'm going to purchase an ad. 
and I want my ad to look a certain way, and I want the words in my ad to say exactly this, and that costs a certain amount of money. And when you work with a TV station and you work with a newspaper or a radio station, you can dictate exactly what you want that ad to look like. And everybody knows that. Um, and so when you're doing something for news coverage, it's going to look pretty different, right? So you work with a reporter and you can't dictate exactly what you want it to look like. But there are a couple of things that we can do. And that's where I wanted to start with branding and what's your story. So I want you all to think about consistent messaging and branding as the very first thing when you are working with a reporter. Um, because this is important. You want to tell your story and you want to be consistent about it. And we all want to be kind of saying the same things when we're talking to the reporter. Um, if you think about what is my company's story and take some time to kind of think through it and what would resonate, resonate with, um, the people in your community? Do you have kind of a, um, a cool community story? Do you have um, a neat background? Are you uh, multi-generational? Have you been in the same location for a while? Is it something that your grandfather started? Those are the sorts of things that maybe even you would think about, oh, I like to patronize these several businesses, local businesses, because I know that um, that the, the grandfather started it, or I know that this is a local business, so it's something that I feel comfortable and I like patronizing local businesses. Those are things that you like to weave into your story. And so I wanna make sure that you emphasize that when you're doing an interview. So I want, on the second bullet point, this is where we all want our stories told, right? We want to get the awareness about our business because we want people to come in and spend money at our business. So truly, the second bullet point is the whole key to why we want or why media coverage is important. And I'm right there with you. Go ahead. And May, I just wanted to tag, um, tag on to the consistency point. Um, so I was recently, I read an article that said, um, I'll read it, but it said the general rule of thumb is that it takes five views to read it, 10 views to become memorable and up to 20 views to become a conversation. So I think, I mean, to me as a marketer, that shows that repetition is so important when we are talking about our company name, you know, our logo, our message. So it just goes into the whole, I feel like consistency and repetition is, you may feel like you're saying the same thing over and over again of, you know, maybe your company's story or, you know, why you guys are there, but it takes a while for people to even get that message. Um, I think that's just kind of, I think that stat as a marketer for me, like really stops me in my tracks of like, okay, we have to continue to push and get our message out all these different ways. Um, so I don't know. I just think it's kind of interesting as we think about PR and, and maybe, last on our list, but the more that we can get that same story out. Um, and the fact that it's earned, it's not paid is another benefit, obviously to us as a fireworks company. Um, you know, maybe we don't have the opportunity to do a lot of paid media, um, because of some of the restrictions. So it makes, I feel like PR even more important, but just exactly. a couple thoughts. <laughs> No, and I love that. And I always try to talk to clients about how this is a piece where you hear it over here or you see something over here and you catch it over here and you see it on Facebook here. And it's all of those pieces together that finally catches somebody's attention. And it can't just be, oh, well, I posted it on Facebook. So one and done. It takes several times. And I think that article um, it reinforces that message. Yep. Okay. So awareness. This is the whole reason why we want it. We want to get our message out, right? We want people to come in and spend their money. So um, this is where 
you are trying to tell your story and you have to be careful here because you cannot place an ad and pretend like it is a news story. And so that brings me to the last bullet point and that's educate. So this is where we kind of work the system. We position our news stories as if we are educating or informing. And we do this all the time. And this is where PR people like me get the title of spin doctors or, you know, that we're always trying to like twist our messages. And I don't really like that, but this is where I need your help. You can't call up the news media and say, hey, I have a business. I want you to come to a story about it because I need people to come in and spend money. You're never going to get coverage with that sort of phone call. What you try to tell the news media is, hi, I have an important story for your readers or viewers that is going to help them. So this is not the fireworks business, but I just want to illustrate what I do for restaurants. When I try to get my restaurant clients on TV, the only way I can do it is if I say, hi, I have a recipe that we can demonstrate for your viewers. Could the chef come on the air and demonstrate a recipe? The chefs hate doing it sometimes. It's a lot of work, but it does give awareness for the restaurant and expose the restaurant and um, do all those branding and messaging things that we're trying to do. And that way we are getting out there by educating and informing the viewers. And so we have to find that story angle, which I'm going to talk about on the next slide. Okay. So developing the story angle. So this is, and we're going to give you some story angles. So I don't want you to think that I have, that you have to try to come up with these on their own. But if you sit back and you kind of think about, if you put your um, news editor hat mm -hmm. on, if I could write the story myself, what would it say? What would the headline be? And I don't want you to think that you want the headline to be like your address and that you're the best, you know, fireworks business in the county. Um, what legitimately, what would be a good news headline? And so think about that. And that will kind of help you think about the story angle. And that's where writing these bullet or these talking points, which are generally bullets, um, for the interview. And I like to tell people, come up with three key messages. Three is a good number. If you want to do four or five, that's fine too. But I like three because it's your way of controlling the message when you're doing the interview. It's easy to remember. And you know that when you are doing an interview with a reporter, that you want to touch on these things. And if your interview starts to go in a different way, you can bring it back to those key messages that you've already developed and maybe even typed up or written out. One way you can do that is you can think about what are the obvious questions? Yes, you're not a reporter. You may not have gone to journalism school, but any of us, because it's not rocket science, can think about what are the obvious questions? It's 4th of July. What is this reporter going to ask me? They're going to probably ask about the safety of fireworks. What are the hottest fireworks this season? Um, you know, how do you put on a fireworks display? You can come up with what those things are. And then I want you to think about what are the questions I don't want this reporter to ask me because I'm not comfortable answering them. And I'm just, I know that I'm going to stumble and I'm going to, probably not know the right answer. So where are you vulnerable? 
And I want you to focus on the answer to those questions instead of sticking your head in the sand and not focusing on those. Really practice answers to those. Maybe they won't ask you those and you'll get lucky. But even if they do, you'll have a good answer to those. And then this last bullet point, storytelling, this is my favorite one. And I like to talk to clients about storytelling because this is most likely going to be your sound bite. Um, if you think about anything that you remember, it's usually a story that somebody has told. So come up with an antidote and kind of practice it, make it succinct. Um, I I like for it to be true. So think of something that's, you know, actually happened. Um, and generally it could be, um, it may even change the whole trajectory of the reporter's coverage. So the example that I thought of was, um, you have somebody who came in, they shopped and they bought a ton of fireworks. They filled up two full carts, shopping carts of fireworks. And this is their first time ever buying fireworks. So it's a first time buyer. You helped them pick out and put together some shows. You filled up their whole backseat and it's a woman and she's buying for her family. You filled up the whole backseat of her car and her trunk. And you gave her a one-on-one -on -one lesson in, um, fireworks and how to safely shoot fireworks. And she's an example of um, first time firework buyers and how that's kind of a trend that's happening right now. And so that example is, could change the whole story. Maybe the reporter will say, you know, I'm going to kind of focus on that. And that's going to be the opening for the story. So think through, that may not be happening in your area. Um, and maybe you have got, have another trend, but make sure you think through trends or um, other things that are happening and share that with, um, with the reporter. Do you have anything to add here, Alicia? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. okay, so now I wanted to talk to you a little bit about processes with um, like actual like nuts and bolts of processes. So identify an internal protocol. Um, what I mean about that is like, I want you to feel good about, feel optimistic and positive about getting news coverage. So even before the season starts, um, know that you have a couple of story ideas in mind and that you um, plan to reach out to the media, but you need to know who in your organization will do the interview. So you need to identify who is the right person to be on TV doing an interview you need to find somebody who's articulate and cheerful and can, um, can present on television about the company. And, you know, it's maybe it's one or two people and you have those people lined up. And then you also need to kind of have a protocol for who responds. So if the phone call comes in and you guys are slammed, you need to have that figured out like, hey, if the phone call comes in and it's July 2nd, um, we need to make sure that somebody responds to that reporter within, you know, an hour. And we need to, even though we're busy, we need to make sure we get back to them. So that's the protocol I'm talking about. Then secondly, I really think it's important that you send information to local media. You can't just have kind of this story idea in the back of your mind and believe that they will magically pick up the phone and call you. So when I say send information to local media, 
I'm going to touch on that when we get to the end, because I'm going to share with you about um, a couple of story ideas, and I'll tell you exactly how to do it. Be as timely and flexible as possible. So this means I want you to, when you get a phone call, you're going to have to pretty much be available. And unfortunately, this is a time when you're also pretty busy because a TV reporter will nine times out of 10 want to cover a 4th of July story about two to three days before 4th of July. So anybody who's done a story um, with TV knows this. And for those of you who haven't, I just want you to be prepared that you get a call um, on um, the day, usually the day of, that they want to come and do the story. It's not something you schedule a couple days out. Um, and then do your research. So I want you to be able to say, um, you know, well, we sold out of fireworks last year. Or um, we, the sort of things that they're really looking for. Um, if you can share safety tips and facts, um, things like, you know, actually um, injuries are down. And let me share that with you because firework sales have increased over the last X number of years. So if you can share some of those facts with them, provide some supporting facts and research, if you can kind of do those things, those are the sorts of things that also make good sound bites. And Megan, just to tag on to the research part, um, obviously we want, we want to make sure that everyone or anyone who's doing the interview knows their local laws. Um, I always like to refer media folks to the American Pyrotechnic Association website. They have um, a state directory there, and then they also have a really nice safety section on their website. Um, so those are really good, two good resources that it'd be beneficial to check that out beforehand, um, before the season starts, and just make sure that you have, um, have that knowledge. And then in terms of safety, um, you know, making sure that you are aware and you, you know, you do know that, you know, fireworks, obviously they've been making them for years and that, you know, those processes have changed and, you know, we're making them safer. Um, all the fireworks have, you know, a fuse protector. They give information on how to use them or kind of what the expected effects are on the back. You know, that's helpful. So customers know what to expect. Um, and then also just how they're made. I mean, um, I mean, there's more third party restrictions and manufacturing guidelines are getting a little bit stricter. So all those things, the third party testing, um, you know, that all I think adds value to your story for safety. So. But, okay. Now on the next slide, we will really drill down. So you have secured an interview um, at this point and, or your, the calls are coming in, we'll say. And so I wanna give you some real, um, what you do now, like what, what do I do now? Um, so first, the very first thing that I like to tell people is never do an interview on the phone um, the minute you pick it up. So always take a minute. So the phone, the phone rings and you pick it up and it's like, you know, hi, I'm Megan. I work with the local newspaper. I want to talk to you about what's going on um, with fireworks. Um, the only thing you need to say is, hi, let me take your name and number. I will find the right person to talk to you. And what's your deadline? And we would be happy to do the interview, but I just need to put a couple of things together for you and we'll get back to you within an hour or whatever the case may be. And that is that gives you time to gather your thoughts, 
put together those facts we just talked about. Maybe you want to share something related to sales or, you know, if you're comfortable, maybe you walk out and you look at, you know, we've done X number. I, I'm not suggesting you do that. I'm not requesting mm-hmm. you do that, but maybe there is something generally sales wise that you think would be fun to share. Um, so that I, I always encourage people to call back. You are not required to just start talking. Um, and I, sh- I share that with every level of person, CEO to, to everybody, you know, take a minute, take a breath and jot a couple things down um, and think through what you wanna say. Um, the other thing before you hang up from that first uh, phone call, What's your deadline? What's this story about? And um, take try to try to get a little bit out of them. Find out like what your part in the story is and what they know. What are what what the reporter's knowledge is or feelings is, feelings are about the story. And then of course you want to know who the reporter is. TV, radio, print, or web. The Generally, the only reporters who will want to um, do a phone interview are um, newspaper. The TV will want to come out and um, so will radio. I think it's unlikely that you will get a radio interview. It just doesn't happen very often these days, Um, but it does on occasion and especially in smaller communities. and then we had so many Zoom interviews last year that I put that on here too. So that, that is still happening because the TV stations were um, got comfortable doing it. I think some of them got a little lazy. And so mm-hmm. if you find yourself maybe in the outer areas of a community further away from um a bigger city, maybe they would be open to doing a Zoom interview. So that's something that you would maybe keep in mind. Um, And then the last thing I have on here with working with the media is video or photo. So for photo, I want you to think about um, with a newspaper, always mention it. Hey, we would be open to a photo. We would, you know, if you're doing a phone interview, Um, we would welcome a photographer to come by, or I would be happy to email you a photo. And then with the TV, just think through video. Where would you welcome them to come and shoot video? And what would work for video? Where could they um, get customer? They love getting movement. They love getting demonstrations. They love getting people doing things. So Um, the more they can see things happening, the better. And they don't love um, static things. And they also don't like um, things being manufactured. So if you are going to ask employees to go and kind of pretend to straighten the store, great, but do it quietly. And then that's fine. Um, They just don't like things to be um, made up or fake or um, staged. Gotcha. May, I think that's a good point. And then I just made a list of some ideas for photo opportunities. Um, You know, pictures of the staff unloading like a truck or a trailer. Um, I know a lot of times those fireworks are um, from the truck, then they're put into the trailer. And then from the trailer, they go into the store. So I think any of that stuff, um, you know, people kind of forget how labor intensive it is to run a store. So I think any of that behind the scenes stuff works really well. Um, Stocking the shelves. So opening up the boxes, putting the fireworks on the shelf. That's really a really good idea. Um, If there's customers shopping around, you know, obviously any engagement that you could get with your employee helping the customer, maybe if they're already at the register, you know, they could get a picture of that, um, them checking out. And then 
if you guys have an online component, I know some stores launched have launched that over the last couple of years, maybe a picture of like all your online orders that are staged and ready to be picked up. Um, or even like how, you know, if you could have the opportunity to just give them a video, you know, how someone can actually shop online and, and add that to their cart. Um, that kind of video is, is helpful. Um, and then safety supplies. I mean, we've have found that to be really beneficial when we've talked to the media. So I know m- most stores probably have like a safety poster. Um, some give out information with all of their purchases. A lot of people give out punks. So the punks, um, your safety, you know, eye protective wear, stuff that you could maybe, if you don't have it at the store, you know, bring that to the store um, ahead of the season and make sure you have that there. Um, a bucket of water or just a bucket and tell them you, that's what you would put in it. Um, punk, cinder blocks, you know, protective eyewear, all that stuff. I feel like, again, it adds value to the safety message. It shows that we're for real. This is, you know, a legit company. These are the things that we're doing, um, all that good stuff. So just some ideas. Yeah. And so all of those things are notes that I included in, um, that we included in our um, media pitch uh, downloadable document. And so um, once you are able to get the media to come out, I take a look at that. And those are some really, really good ideas that you just shared because if the, if safety is the story angle, they're going to be looking for yeah. what, what can you show me? You know, yeah. we're, we're here to cover safety. So I can't just be videoing fireworks sitting on shelves. And yeah. so those are great ideas. I think they would want to see like somebody, you know, doing things safely with a bucket of water, with goggles, with the punk and all of those things are great ideas. And we've done a few um, even demos for the media folks. I mean, we've picked a small item like smoke or a small fountain. Um, but yeah, having all that stuff set up in advance, I felt like obviously you're not scrambling beforehand or, um, you know, when you get the call, have that be a part of that protocol of to get all the safety gear, have it already set up. And I think it just makes the interview and that time with the reporter go smoothly. Exactly. Okay. So a couple more things. Um, and we've covered a couple of these, but, um, these may be common sense for most of you, but I'm going to touch on them anyway. And this is what I tell my clients. And I think some of them might be rolling their eyes. So I'm just going to share these anyway. Um, wear a logoed shirt. So you look good and you're, you're all branded up. Um, uh, think about, where you want to be interviewed in the store or in the tent and what's behind you. And so this is kind of what you would do, like what we're doing today (laughs) um, on a Zoom interview too. Um, So think about where you want to be. And we always do that when we're doing um, in the store too. And sometimes you move around a little bit. The other thing that people don't think about is the photographer for a TV interview the photographer may start looking at you and then you're still talking and the photographer goes and starts showing other things. So don't be surprised if that happens, which is great, you know, cause they're showing your store and your products. Um, my number one tip, or I have two number one tips. My top two tips, um, are on here. Um, speak clearly and naturally. Just have a conversation with the reporter. Um, the other thing that does happen is there is no reporter and photographer. There's just one person and they are both. They're the photographer and reporter. So you're just looking at the person. You're not looking in the camera. Um, I always make a joke. It's not your own cooking show on the cooking channel. You are just having a conversation with the person. Um, And so you're not looking at the camera the whole time. You're looking at the, either the photographer or the reporter. 
you're just having a conversation. Keep in mind, if you stumble over your words or if you have a little bit of a, um, not, if it's not perfect, that's fine because that's how people talk naturally in conversation. Um, if you're in a live interview, keep on going because that's what happens. If you know that you are in a taped interview and you had something catastrophic happen in your interview and you feel like I could have done that better and that was just terrible, you can stop the interview and say, let me do that over. And I do tell clients that I do not see that happen very often. So just keep that in mind. I think it helps people to know that. Um, mm -hmm. If they're doing a taped interview, just to know in the back of their mind, I can stop this and do it again. And then they feel better about it. Um, I just say make good eye contact with the reporter. Um, and we kind of went over that. Um, posture, gestures, and facial expressions. And then the last one, smile. So um the only thing I say about posture and gesture is I sometimes I see people kind of doing this. I'm sitting, but kind of like going back and forth and going back on one leg or another. So try to plant both of your feet. And so you know, my feet are planted before you start the interview. I've got both my feet. I'm not going to sway and think of it consciously. I'm going to plant my feet and I'm going to stand still in this interview. And gestures are okay. I'm probably somebody who over gestures, um, mm -hmm. but just try to not be going like this too much because people won't hear you and they'll just be looking at your hands flying around. And then the only thing, oh, on the facial expressions, uh, I think I know why I put that. Um, have a pleasant look on your face from the minute you think even before you think you're on camera. So this has happened to a lot of my clients. They do not think they're on camera yet. And so they have kind of a scowl and I don't like that. So start smiling the minute the reporter starts talking and, um, and then most importantly, smile. So keep the smile going. It's not always easy to smile and talk, but I think people want to hear the smile in your voice. Okay, so mm -hmm. and that brings me to don't get defensive or angry if you get a, a difficult question, <laughs> which is very, very hard. Um, I want to start off by saying I do not believe that you guys will get difficult questions. I think that most of you know, 90% of these stories are going to be positive stories about 4th of July and shopping for fireworks and how to be safe with your fireworks and informative um, awareness stories about 4th of July. I just don't think that the local news is going to come in and try to do a gotcha story about anything having to do with fireworks. Having said that, I just wanted to put a slide in here about how to be prepared so that we would know um, just in case. So for difficult questions, um, I wanted to put these first four bullets because this is just standard um, crisis communication, media relations stuff that everybody should know and that us PR pros should share. So never say no comment or go off the record. It's kind of something you see like in the movies. Just don't do it. It's very bad practice. Don't speculate. So that's something that you would do like, well, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I heard that there was like a bad accident or whatever, you know, like that's just never good. Um, if, um, if you can't answer give a reason. Um, like, you know, I can't answer that question because it is, um, in litigation right now. 
that's the best example I can come up with, but I'm sure there's other ones too. I, I, I can't answer that because I just don't have any information about that. I mean, that would be okay too. Um, um, Megan, I have a quick question. So, I mean, I don't think news folks get into like the nitty gritty of sales, but since fireworks have been pretty successful the last couple of seasons, how do you maybe suggest that someone navigate like, oh, you know, sales are, you know, I'm assuming your sales are really good or a sales question. Um, is there kind of a way that, as I think that's hard to answer. I mean, I just, obviously you want to be like, yes, you know, like we have a successful business, but you don't want to give too much. I mean, it's, you know, it's also kind of private information. Right. Okay. So Absolutely. I, I hear that from not just fireworks business, but any privately owned business. Um, so I think that you could say um, our sales have increased this year, but we're a privately owned business. So I, I can't share you share exact numbers. And if you wanted to, um, you could share a percentage, you know, we're, we're up, um, we're up 10% this year, and most people aren't even comfortable sharing a percentage. Yeah. Our, our business is up this year, but because we're a privately owned business, I can't share exact numbers. I think that's friendly, and it's not kind of like this next one, defensive or angry. Um, I have not ever seen a TV reporter ask about sales. If you are doing a story with the business journal, you will be asked about sales. So that um, be sure that a um, any sort of business journal or business related publication will be there to ask you about sales. Yeah, I mean, unless they tell you when you hear the topic of the story, I am coming to do a story about your sales. Mm -hmm. Then you be prepared. <laughs> head that off. Like, look, we're privately owned. And so I can't share anything specific about sales. If you're still interested in interviewing me, I can share that my business has increased, but that is as much as I can share. So again, I would just be open and friendly, um, answer if you can't, but give a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this last one about remember your key messages and bridge, that one um, is when you're on camera. And so that's the one where, you know, it's kind of like, I always think of it as like a politician. So, um, the example that I typed up was something like, isn't it true that someone was injured last night with a firework or fireworks safe? And then um, there's all kinds of bridges that you could say. Um, so the, the idea here is you briefly answer, acknowledge positively the question, then you bridge, and then you go back to your key message. So you could say something like, look, I'm always sorry to hear about any sort of injuries of any kind, but is specifically related to fireworks. Um, I wanna make sure that people understand that many injuries are due to illegal fireworks and misuse of fireworks. And then you could kind of go on to say something like, we encourage consumers to be extremely careful with purchase of fireworks and ensure that you're working with a qualified dealer. So that may not be a perfect example, but the idea is that you do answer the question. We don't want you to say like, I'm not talking about that, no comment, you know, but you do kind of answer the question and make sure that you um, turn it around as best you can with a um, bridge to your key message. I think it, you can also share those safety, maybe your three top safety tips of, you know, we 
our number one safety tip is, you know, secure your fireworks to the ground, make sure you have one designated shooter, and then have those, um, you know, something, once those fireworks go out, have your bucket of water um, handy and keep your audience at a safe distance. I think, you know, maybe that gets forgotten, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm getting close to the end. I just want, this is kind of like the most important part of what I wanted to share with you guys because I want you to know what to pitch out to the media when you have that opportunity and kind of how to do it. Um, this is the part where um, people maybe aren't that excited to do this part. So <laughs> I'm going to tell you exactly what to do um, and how to do it. And I promise you, it's not scary and it's not hard. Um, and you're going to think, why, why am I not a PR person? <laughs> okay. So these are the three possible story ideas um, that we are sharing today. Um, I'm sure there's other ones. So um Fireworks safety, and I put a little bit about first-time users. That may be something that was just happening last year, but maybe it's still going on. The idea was with COVID, people were kind of um, excited about being at home, and so they were um, doing at-home fireworks displays. So we'll have to kind of see what 2022 brings, if that's still happening. Um, number two, new and best fireworks, best fireworks for families, how to put together a fireworks show. That's always good. Um, people like kind of that traditional every year going to cover the fireworks story. You know, this is, this is what our news station does. And we've got to do that. That one is probably not that great for newspaper. That's probably a TV one. And then shop early. Um, there's been a shortage in the past. What will be like in 2022? Consumers who want the best selection should shop early. That's a little bit promotional, um, but you know we can give it a go and see if we can get people like, to understand. You know, we were pitching that story out um, in Memorial Day timeframe. So we sent that one out. Then we talked about Memorial Day. People use fireworks for Memorial Day. And you need to get out there early because of what's been going on with this industry. Mm -hmm. So how do you do it? Well, it's very simple. You send oh. it. Uh-oh. That's okay. I'll go back. <laughs> you send an email. And you can find the email to the news um, by going to the website. So you're going to have to do a little research in your community. And it, it's not going to take you long. You go to the website for, you know, the three TV stations and you find the main news desk email. And it's usually something like news at WDAFchannel4.com. And that feeds directly into their news desk where they have an assignment editor who sits 24 seven at the news desk, or maybe not 24 seven these days because of, you know, hiring issues. Then that, that person is just like you and I, and they get a bazillion emails and they will read it and they will like, hmm, I don't know, maybe... And so then it goes into a digital file. You have to pick up the phone and call and say, hi, I'm Megan. I sent you an email yesterday about a firework safety story. I think this could be a great story for one of your reporters. I was wondering if you guys received my email and if this looks like something you're interested in covering. It's that simple. I will tell you, the people on the other end, 99% of the time are not friendly. So I'm just warning you, it's not gonna be fabulous when you call. 
but you have to make the phone call. And they're going to be like, just a minute. Let me see if I can find your email. Just a minute. And they'll look and they'll finally find it. What time did you send it? Okay. Yeah, I see it here. Okay. Well, maybe we'll see. This has been the story of my life for the last 25 years. I am telling you, you have to place that phone call. Um, so to wrap up real quickly on media, I don't want to leave it on a negative note because that seems kind of sad there. You have all the tools in your toolbox. You know how to create your story angle, how to develop your story for your brand and kind of some tips and tricks like how to do um, the interview and how to set up your protocol and even how to like manage the difficult question, which I don't think you'll get. And then how to pick up the phone and call. And maybe you will get like a friendly person. Maybe in some of these small <laughs> communities, you'll get a nice friendly person who will say, yeah, we'll come out and cover your story. Um, so that's, that's my expertise. And that's my portion of the webinar. And I'm going to turn it over to Alicia. Um, the only thing I had to add, and I probably should have said it earlier, Megan, would be some other story ideas. I don't know if you think like, hiring or supply chain um, in like business operations. Like I think I mentioned yeah. earlier, some stores may be doing buy online and maybe that's new or, you know, maybe they're doing something else that's different. Um, do you think I those? Yep. Okay. Good. Like businessy kind of ideas, maybe. So yeah. um, cool. Well, I'm going to Go to the next slide that you guys already saw. But <laughs> so this is just a little bit about how to amplify and leverage your PR coverage. Um, like Megan said, you know, first you want to make sure and identify who's going to actually do the interview. And I think at that point, you also want to see um, who's going to be the one that could take pictures and be kind of the social media um, point person. Um, obviously if you have someone doing the interview, it's hard for them to do both of those tasks. So when you're have the interview set up, um, make sure and ask, you know, you know, for sure what news station it is. And when you get there, have them, someone taking pictures, you can even, you know, post those pictures immediately. Um, you can tag the news station. You can ask the interview or the anchor, maybe if they have, you know, a personal or a professional tag that they would want. Um, make sure and do a Facebook or an Instagram live. So if that, maybe they're going to get there and they're setting up for a, an early, you're going to give them a demo of, of how to shoot at firework safety safely. You could jump on and do a Facebook live, show everything that you have set up, tell people that, you know, you'll be back with the news station in a half hour, you know, so excited to share this information with you guys and kick off the season. Um, another suggestion would be to write a blog post. So if you have a website for your company, it's always good that you can then have this coverage kind of live in different places and different channels. So writing a blog post, you can, you have that copy, you can insert a picture, then you can even maybe upload that to YouTube or even share that on your Facebook stories can just kind of get a good visual of how one interview can, you know, have different elements to it. Um, and then reshare the content. Let's say they came out for Memorial Day. You could definitely reshare that as it gets closer to the fourth. Uh, also request a link. I think sometimes that's probably missed when you're with um, talking to the, the media make sure and ask them, Hey, is this going to be posted? When do you think this will be posted? And then you may have to follow up and ask them for that link or go find it yourself. And then if you do, you know, share that across your social channels. So just a couple of ideas on how one piece of coverage can be used across social media and even your website. But I feel like I ran through that super fast. <laughs> 
Um, and then the, the picture. The only thing I would add on that is just to to reiterate what you're saying there, because if you think about like who's at home watching TV at five o'clock p.m. when this story may air, or at five a.m. in the morning, or whatever. This is such a great way that it will live on and mm -hmm. on and on. So if you can capture it, you've gone to all this trouble, you've developed your protocol, you've picked up the phone and called the TV station, you've done all of these things. This is such an important piece of it because you are now able to make this story get so many more views than mm -hmm. it would if it was just the people who were watching it when they happened to be sitting on their couch at five o'clock when the news aired. So I love this idea. Well, and I think, and just how people are receiving their news is so different these days. Um, you know, I'm, I have a, I'm a mom of a toddler and I have tons of friends that, you know, follow different Instagram accounts on parenting advice and, you know, eating and things like that. And, you know, times have changed. We're not going to, you know, you're not looking up that stuff even on the internet anymore. You're just looking and scrolling through your social media. And so yeah. making sure that that news or that information is on those social channels where people are scrolling, um, you know, and it gives your company credibility and, and things like that. And, and also content is, I mean, content is hard to capture when you have all these other things to do. Um, you know, it's just, it's difficult to like, oh, now I need to go take a picture of people unloading the fireworks or I need to go get a picture of someone's cart. So if you can have those things top of mind and quickly take those pictures, you know, I feel like gathering the content is half the battle. And if you already have someone there, you know, it's always, it's perfect timing. So um, that's just a couple of ideas. So we'll go ahead and wrap up. And then I just listed a couple of resources. So Megan, we put together uh, media interview tips. That's one word document. And then we have an email pitch example. So really gives you a framework for how to reach out literally like words to type. You can just change, you know, some change the company name, change some things around. Um, and that'll be a really good working example for you guys to use. And then I listed safety links. Um, this is all from the American Pyro um, Technic Association. And again, I think they have a really good area of their website where they talk about safety. They have handouts, different videos, things like that that you can use for your store, even for employee training, um, and then to talk to the, the media. So I will link all of these, like I said earlier, when the video is posted, you guys will be able to access that stuff. So, um, Megan, anything else that you have to add? No, this was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was good to kind of talk about the basics and get your mind thinking, you know, about the season already and how you can start planning and kind of get you excited. I think a little bit. So, and whenever you watch, whenever someone watches this, this is going to be helpful. So yeah. Yes. Cool. Well, thank you guys all for joining. I hope you guys enjoyed our video and um, I'd say that's a wrap. We're good. Okay, <laughs> Let us know if you have you. questions. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye, Megan.